Dutch line until 3 o'clock. Of course, we still continue. Noi254, my name is Max Olwasike. Roni, Barry are still here. We're talking about matters, uh, local football. But of course, as we speak right now, a lot is happening at Nyai National Stadium. Keep Kano Classic World Continental Tour. They were targeting 6,000 fans. I don't know whether that has been achieved. We shall be getting to our reporters pitching come since morning. Just to get glimpses of what is happening and keep you updated tomorrow. Epic showdown. It was expected to be so. <laughs> as far as London Marathon is concerned, Elid Kipchoge up against the Ethiopian Kenenisa Bekele, who pulled out due to Carl Fincher making the competition uh, sort of, you know, colorless. Roni, are you, are you looking forward to event tomorrow as you are looking forward to it before the draw of Kenenisa? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, with Bekele and um, with Bekele into the rest, you know, Bekele was just two seconds, about two seconds yes, off yes. Uh, Kipchoge's uh, record. I mean, and it was a race that everyone was looking forward to, but now the organizers have done played it and said, no, it was not just a two-man <laughs> two race. But yeah. see, we all know it was a two-man <laughs> race, even during yeah, the event yeah, press conference, yeah. two of them. Mm -hmm. But then, I mean, this is for Kipchoge to, to, yes. to bring it home, actually. Um, it's it's, it's going to be an exi exciting race still. Uh, even in the ladies category, there sure, sure, sure. there's there's actually a very very strong the likes uh, of Bridget Koskei, Bridget Koskei, uh, Chariot. There's actually a very uh, strong race in the ladies category. So it's one race that I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Uh, though one of the highlights, there are actually two highlights. Bekele out of the race with I think a calf injury yes. that he says is uh, is sustained late to 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 the race and uh, the issue of shoes, you know. <laughs> uh, it's 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 been a dominant discussion in sure. this one, yeah. And we just are going to see how that plays out as well. What is this problem with shoes, man? <laughs> Adidas and Nike. Uh, yeah. Not I, I, I think products. I think I think it's. Uh, I don't think it's really about quality. There's some funny games going on because also here I don't know if this guy got injured because he's not used to these shoes. <laughs> but uh, I don't think shoes can be an excuse. Like Ronnie says, we are expecting <laughs> action. Uh, keep it going to keep to plan lower yeah. last year and uh, probably sub 1.9 below there and uh, it will be very... That will be good for him. Good for his personal <coughs> image and brand as well. But you know, since, since Nike launched this new, uh, this new line of shoes around September 2018, uh, we've seen the mar marathon times go down considerably. So then there's a solid case against her <laughs> shoes, yeah. so to say. Yeah. But then Kipchoge also spoke about it, I think, yesterday and said, look, we are in the age of technology, and uh, it's not the shoes that run, it's yeah. people that run. Uh, but then there's just the whole discussion around it, and the world at athletics has also, I think, early this year, issued some direction against uh, the the maximum thickness of the form for the shoes. So, well, it's not the shoes that run, but then <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those uh, subplots in the main plot that, however, will be missing one main actor who's yeah, Bekele. Yeah. So, of course, as Barry's mic gets fixed, let's continue. You are talking about a very important aspect of, you know, recycling of coaches because there are those prominent names we are used to as far as coaching is concerned. Francis Kimanzi, you know, James Nandwa, Stanley Okumbi, who else, who else? Uh, John Kamau. Uh, now, is it high time for former players like Ambani, like Modo Kimani, transiting to coaching, just like what you're seeing overseas in English Premier League? Well, ideally, not all uh, former players can make great coaches. Yes. And there are people who've not really kicked a ball as much like Mourinho, and they've made really great coaches. Uh, Asin Wenger wasn't one of the top players, but then he's transitioned and become a really great coach. Uh, Thierry Henry really was a great player, player but, but coaching has been it's it's been another it's been another issue. So but we need to see more Kenyan players and more young people in Kenya taking up <coughs> coaching roles. I mean there's that opportunity for sure. But you feel there's in England, for instance, one of the major issues has been not many English coaches go outside England or outside Britain to coach. Those who've done it uh, haven't been very successful. One example is David Moyes, who uh, tried out at Manchester United after Everton, where he was successful, then went to Spain 
and wasn't successful really. But you see lots of South American coaches coming, venturing outside South America and they're successful. Pochettino came into England and did really well. So, I mean, Kenyan coaches, it's high time that we see more of them going outside the borders, going outside the comfort zone to just compete to the other coaches in the continent. Sure deal. I think we're just getting to Barry shortly after his mic is fixed, a little bit of technical hitch, but we continue with you. We were talking about, you know, what happened to our players who did exceptionally well as far as featuring for the national team is concerned, top clubs, go FC, and how their life or rather lives have changed to the worst. I don't know. Is it a matter of personal responsibility or you know, uh, the stakeholders of Kenyan football should take blame for the predicaments these people are going through. Yeah, you see, um, recently there was, a, I, I saw on Instagram that Radul had a, had a throwback photo of, of uh, a certain moment she was airing some matches at Neo Stadium, you know. And um, she said at that point, everyone, including ourselves, thought that the league was on an upward trajectory. Yes. That's not been the case. I mean, we were rising really fast, 2009, 2010, 2011. Uh, there was Super Sport, there was Tasca. Uh, there, there was all this flair in the league, but it just died. And uh, it's no longer there. It's no longer fun. There's no money. Players are struggling. So for me, it's a question of the people at the top. If they don't set the pace, if they don't inject the professionalism, then at the end of the day, it's the players that suffer, you know. Indeed, it's the players that suffer. You agree, right? As a man who's been, you know, crisscrossing several parts of the country, covering Kenyan football, top tier, that is KPL, and National Super League matches, going to Sudi Stadium to cover yeah. Nzoya, you know, going to now disbanded. I was passing by Moroni the other day and I saw the facility <laughs> looking uh, shambolic yeah. since, you know, the club was disbanded. Yeah. I don't know. W will you read from the same page with him? Yeah, I agree entirely. Uh, everything must depend, in, in this case, from how management operates. Management must set a clear plan. Uh, strategy is very key and, and uh, commitment to oversee uh, to oversee and uh, maybe how the this uh, this clubs are run and remember we should take these clubs as projects and we have to take the players as instruments and resources so if 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 the management the top doesn't take care of, of the responsibility well we are likely to see uh, like what we've seen with many clubs disbanded <coughs> I mean uh, if you if you've been down to areas of Moroni and Germany Moroni agrochemical just died. One of the top clubs now, Moroni, which is being sponsored by Moroni Sugar. Sure. Chamberlain Sugar and Sony Sugar. There was no league with those two, uh, two clubs. And, and I blame it, for me, I blame it on the management. This is why they got to where they are. As, as, as a sports market, how comes, you know, the corporate has been sort of scared and reluctant to come sponsor, you know, not only football activities, but sports in general? You know, there has been that aspect of reluctance from corporate. We saw what happened to Sakata during the tenure of Sam Nyamwea where it's alleged that a top football official sought for <laughs> a kickback from Safaricom. Hence they rejected to, they decided unanimously to halt the funding of the tournament. But we've seen Chapadimba coming back. Good to see now a lot of young players showcasing their talent in Mashinan. But I don't know, to my question, what really happens? Like bit power in your own case. Well, I I honestly feel that sports at um, most of the time uh, hasn't been a market. The end of the day, and. Uh, even if you're going into any sponsorship, you'd want to do that to the sole purpose of helping your brand grow to the next level. As I've initially pointed out, you go to Nyayo Stadium when it was still operational, and we are happy that it's back. You find maybe 100 fans, and just a handful, maybe another 100 or 200 are following the match online. So 
it's not a really attractive number. So at the end of the day, uh, companies would rather put that money into into other into other ventures. But well, just my personal opinion, um, the likes of Sport Pesa were doing pretty well. I mean, there's so much companies can still do, but at least Sport Pesa was setting the pace in what uh, corporates can do to help sports and football move to the next level. Wow. Uh, Barry, yes. your parting shot in terms of where you see Kenyan football in the coming few days or years or months. Nick uh, Mwenda said, I really <coughs> interviewed him prior to 2016 polls and he told me that his main agenda was to help the national team Arambe Stars qualify yeah. for 2022 World Cup in Qatar. I still, I have that bite for mm. <laughs> future reference in case <laughs> yeah. he denies. But where do you see Kenyan football heading to? We've seen sponsorships coming and elections are around the corner and people want to get into office. Nick yeah. is also seeking to defend his position and get re-elected. Yeah. Well, for me, I think two things. Number one, uh, there has to be accountability, and uh, number two, investment. If we invest in the right places uh, with the right people, we will grow. Uh, 2022 is two years. Uh, I think it's a bit uh, ambitious, but for me, structure is also important so that when you're, when you're planning ahead, let's say, you know, with this and going to this and the next. Uh, now we have very viable programs with under 15 and 17. very 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 uh, good for federation and this they have done excellently what i intend to see is uh, probably uh, big key build up matches we don't need to find build up matches we need to take uh, maybe the national teams for the ladies and the men for serious build up matches and serious uh, friendly so that we can get the necessary experience fair enough roni your parting shot um, it's yeah, an exciting couple of months ahead. There's the election, there are the deals that have been signed. So, I mean, I don't want to pour cold water on that, but I'm just hopeful that at least uh, things are going to change for the better. Wow, excellent conversation, quality interview with these two gentlemen, not unfamiliar faces as far as this platform is concerned. They have been here before. Ronnie has been missing in action for quite a while and it was just getting scared maybe coronavirus pandemic caught up with him but it's glad to see him back <laughs> on the show good to have you men and it's been an honor having you on board thank you for coming through and looking forward chelsea winning against palace this afternoon you are a team uh, no, uh, if, if, if they yes lose, or no uh, yes if they lose, <laughs> <crank> out <laughs> arsenal uh, doing pretty good under Mikel Arteta. well there's a bit of a rise under Mikel, but then today the exciting match is leeds united versus Man City, I mean, wow. Bielsa versus Pep. Exciting match, Leeds will beat Man City. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> of course, we're discussing about that in the next few minutes. Taking a short break, we'll be back shortly. Don't go, stay tuned.